climax of the Bonus Army's two-month siege is rapidly developing in the shadow of our nation's capital. Since early June, nearly 18,000 veterans of the Great War of 1917, many homeless and starving, have been camped with their families on the flats of the Anacostia River, demanding payment of their promised soldier's bonus. Today, one policeman and one bonus marcher were killed in skirmishes with local police, prompting President Hoover to order the U.S. Army, under the leadership of General Douglas MacArthur, to remove the veterans. 1,500 federal troops, a combined force of infantry, cavalry, and the newly formed Armor Division have responded to the President's call to put an end to the Veterans' Rebellion. General, any thoughts about going against former soldiers? Watch. Sir, are you concerned at all about how many of these soldiers are going to break out the colors. Major Hardesty, sir. I think they know what army it is. Unite! He was ordered without insubordination, Sergeant Lippy. Break out the colors! On command! In line right! And halt! I give an order, Sergeant. The order goes against my conscience, sir. These men served with us in France. They're only asking for what they were promised. This is mutiny, Sergeant Libby. You're under arrest, mister. You and these other men return to post, under your own recognizance. Attack is on. General MacArthur is in command. The Army of the United States is attacking its own veterans. Their camps are being destroyed. This is a national disgrace. One of our country's darkest hours.
you okay, man? What the hell do you think you're doing? I was walking. Well, the roads are for automobiles. Yeah, if you got one. Well, you look okay to me. Marsh Buxton, ma'am. Only my good friends call me an idiot. Jessica Stewart, and I'm not your good friend. Takes your breath away, doesn't it? Cowboy soldier. I should have guessed. Excuse me. Sir. Bachelor officers' quarters are the last building at the left side of the drill field. Regimental HQ is right in front of us. Thank you, Private. Uh, about the woman, sir. Lady friends are off limits at this time, sir. With all due respect, she isn't my friend. I'm Jessica Stewart, Private. Stewart? As in Colonel Stewart, ma'am? Holy Moses. The commanding officer's daughter? Kind of takes your breath away, doesn't it? Let's see, you were fourth in your class at West Point. You speak three languages, and according to this, you're just about expert in everything, you know. I don't understand something. Why would they take a man so special as you and waste him by uh, send him out to a godforsaken place like this? I don't understand. Now I understand. I see. Uh, listen. Maybe you'd like to enlighten me as to this incident here of you uh, striking an officer at your last post. It was a soldier's fight, sir. He was abusing his horse. And I stopped him. Did you win? Yes, sir, I did. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you have trouble with authority? Yes, sir. Well, you will have no trouble with authority here, my lad. May I explain that to you, all right? The cavalry's not in enough trouble now. Discipline is critical to our morale and essential for our survival, yours and mine. Is that understood? And you'll carry out your orders and you'll do them smartly. And if there's one iota of insubordination in your eyes, you'll face charges. Am I understood? Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. That's much better. OK. Now, since you're attached to the 12th 
And I have the honor of serving with your father. I'm going to have uh, Sergeant Rutherford here. He's going to amend your records. And then you'll be able to start here with uh, clean slate. Thank you, sir. Dismissed. Jessica. Father. Oh. Oh. Back, 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 back. Oh. back, 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 back. Mr. Quinlan. Afternoon, Top. Got that stud working pretty good, Tom. Yeah, he's coming along. Hello, Ahab. Afternoon, sir. Gentlemen. Master Sergeant Libby. Marshal Buxton. May I present Sergeants Quinlan and Mulcahy? Pleasure, sir. It's an honor, sir. Well, I've been assigned officer in charge of remounts and stables. Regulations call for a quartet of horses for each man in the cavalry. Are these all the horses we have? There's a few more. Sergeant Quinlan, sound the recall. They're still grazing, sir. By any chance, would you be related to a Thomas Buxton, sir? He was my father. May I say, sir, that he was one hell of a fine horseman. The best, sir. God love him. It seems like everyone in the cavalry knew him. We had the pleasure of wasting the better part of our youth in the Mexican campaign. Wasted hell. They got the Medal of Honor in the same ceremony. It was a sight to behold, sir. What in God's name are you doing here? It's a long story about a quick decision. Cavalry trick, sir. If a soldier got separated from his mount, a bugle call would bring him back on the double. God damn it, Quinlan. Is this some kind of a joke? Sergeant Shattuck. Can I introduce Lieutenant Buxton? Please make your acquaintance, sir. Every officer can choose his own mount, sir. Personally, Favor that sorrel mare.
Come. Owen? It's a surprise. He didn't tell me it was going to be you. I wasn't notified till 10 days ago myself. This is my ADC, Major Forrest. I'd like to be shown to my quarters now. I'll take formal command at 0900 tomorrow morning. So that's the future. You're like an idiot. I don't think I've ever seen you out of uniform. I haven't worn one of these in years. You look handsome. Darling, I am a soldier. And it hurts me that you disapprove of it. I don't disapprove of you. I'm proud of you. Sure, because I'm out of uniform. I don't hate the army. It's the systematic stupidity of it that galls me. <clears throat> I'm glad that you write for the newspapers, because you've got enough opinions to choke a horse. I told you that I'm not in the army anymore. Sir, we'd like you to have the police to standard that we captured at Carousel. Well, I wasn't there. I was, I was at uh, Guerrero. Yes, sir. And if you hadn't been at Guerrero, not a man in our unit would have walked out of Carazel alive. Sir. It's been an honor, sir. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Listen, if you're ever down Tucson Way, drop in and say hello to an old war horse. Thank you, sir, I will. Stay out of the brig, Mr. Buxton. I'll do my best, Mr. Stewart. with War Department orders. 12th Cavalry is to be incorporated with the 23rd Infantry. I will expect the utmost in cooperation from all officers and men. I will brook no slackness within my command. Additionally, by special order AG 474.71, subject salary. Salaries to all enlisted personnel, including officers, shall be reduced 15% henceforth. 
by Special Order AG 474.72. Subject, Sabre. The Sabre is hereby discontinued as an item of issue to the Cavalry. Finally, it has been directed by Chief of Staff General Douglas MacArthur that in these times of increasing economic hardship, the cavalry is to dispose of excess horses. Accordingly, with the cooperation of the Mexican government, these said remounts are to be driven across the border to be thereby disposed of two days hence. Lieutenant Buxton, you will be in charge of this exercise. Details to be worked out with Sergeant Gruber. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but Army is the whipping boy of Congress. Our supporters are either in insane asylums or the movies. Major Forrest, dismiss them. Sir, I respectfully request permission to be excused from this detail, sir. Request denied. Sir! I cannot in good conscience be part of it, sir. Cannot? By God, you will do as ordered, mister, or face a goddamn court-martial. Your conscience be damned, man. May I see a written order, sir? You may not. Is there a written order, sir? You're insubordinate, mister. Dismissed. Lieutenant, better come quick, sir. It's Lippy. No cavalry. No honor. God damn it. I hate what this world. 
world is coming. So do I, Sergeant. Sergeant. Carry on. Five hundred and six remounts as requested and ordered, sir. May I remind you, we are soldiers, not cowboys. Cowboys use lariats, Mr. Buxton. Soldiers utilize crops. Well, five hundred head are a lot to handle, sir. The pit can handle only perhaps a hundred at a time. Instruct your men to divide them up and bring them forward in order. Sir. Sergeant Gruber, prepare your men. I'm not happy about this, Sergeant. No, sir. But then we're cavalry. You're artillery. There was a time when artillery depended on horses, you know? And they were properly retired to Fort Sill. They weren't murdered. I won't bandy words with you. Carry on. Come on. 
Platoon, lock and load. Never even killed the enemy like that. Shut up, Tom. God damn it, Jack. We gotta do something. Like what? You got general stars on your collar. Finish it, Sergeant. First platoon, pick your targets and fire at will. This ain't right, Top. We can stop it now before they shoot anyone. Stop it, sir? How? By moving the remainder of the horses to safety. You're suggesting we steal the herd, Lieutenant? I'm suggesting that we take them into protective custody before they murder anyone. Take them where, sir? Away from those guns. God damn it, I love those horses. This smacks of insanity, sir. That's insanity. I suggest you decide now, Lieutenant. Let's go. Tom! Lieutenant Buxton, what the hell do you think you're doing? Saving the remainder of the remounts. This is mutiny, mister. No, sir. The cavalryman's first duty is to his horses. The regulations specifically forbid endangering their lives outside of enemy engagements, sir. I believe this expedition to be an illegal act conducted on the part of the War Department. Illegal act? Yes, sir. Have you seen any written orders? As Remount's officer, you are in charge of this, mister. I merely command the infantry. It is also my belief, sir, and since I have seen no written orders, I believe that my first duty is to the horses. Lieutenant Buxton, you've lost your wits. Yes, sir. Have your men cut loose those machine guns immediately. No, sir. Sergeant! Yes, sir. Have your men take possession of those guns. Damn it, Jack. Don't do this. Now, we will take possession of the remount, sir. This will mean Leavenworth. I will await the results of the court martial. Sir. Ah! Suggestion just a house, sir. Arrest them, damn it! Well, I doubt they'll submit, sir, not without a fight. I've known Jack maybe 20 years off and on. Not a man I care to tangle with. Damn them! Yes, sir.
Did you just let them go? Begging the Colonel's pardon, but we thought it was the best course of action. I will remind you, Major, we were under War Department orders. Where are they now? They could be anywhere, sir. But I think they'll head north. North? North indicates a vast area, Major. North is all of America. Sergeant. Cable the details of this fiasco to the War Department requesting instructions. Major, assemble the regiment. I want B Troop patrolling the Mexican border. The mechanized column will move north. I want those men taken. I want their hides framed and hanging on my wall. Yes, sir. May I speak, sir? Be concise and constructive, Sergeant. There's a lot of open country out there. They know how to move quietly and cover their tracks. 400 horses are not easy to hide, Sergeant. No, sir, but there's desert and canyon land to the north and not many paved roads. So your vehicles will be all but worthless. My vehicles will do quite well, mister. They will transport a squadron of your fine troopers to within striking distance. And you will effect the capture of the renegades. Yes, sir. Colonel. If they refuse to surrender, then shoot them. Well, the genie's out of the bottle, sir. You don't have the cork. What now? I'll tell you the truth, Sergeant. I haven't a notion. Oh, what the Sam Hill have we gotten ourselves into? Trouble? We got ourselves into a lot of trouble. Sir, Colonel Hardesty is bound to come after us. And soon. Head north by northwest. Meet me in a place called Broken Hill. You know the spot, Sergeant? I do indeed, sir. And you? Well, if I ride hard, I can make Tucson by tonight. I'll catch up with you sometime tomorrow. Well, now. We're out here on our own, no plan. An officer that couldn't lead flies to shit. And Sean here says, well, now, just like a priest. Just want to scare little Lieutenant Jack. Well, let's not count him out. Yet. It's the tread. This tank's not going anywhere. Move it. Move it. Move it. God Almighty, the army has gone mad. Oh, so then 
You and your men, you conspired to mutiny. There were no written orders, sir. I don't consider it mutiny. I remind you of something that you are an officer in the United States Army and you have taken an oath to obey orders whether they're written or not. <laughs> sir, General MacArthur has decided that the cavalry is obsolete. He may be right, I do not know. But when they muster out the troops, they thank them for their service and they wish them well. They do not march them behind the barracks and shoot them. Now, the cavalry is men and horses. And we have a tradition and a duty to protect them. They fight beside us and they die beside us. They deserve the same respect and the same honor. Well. It's a point of honor, all right. Given the situation, if I was in your position, I hope to God I could do the same. Oh, stop gaping, woman. Now, what's your plan? Well, Hardesty is south, so I thought we might move north. That's not a plan, that's a direction. The truth is, <clears throat> with all due respect to the Army, nothing at the point prepared me for this. I don't know what rules apply anymore. I was hoping that, that you could help me. I don't know what to do, sir. Well, first of all, sit down. Well, you've fallen out of the fall, that's for sure. And the, the War Department will give you little mercy, and General Douglas MacArthur will give you none. So now you have to make a choice, you see. You can either fall back, or you can go forward. Back is wrong, sir. There you are. Now, that's your first willful, conscious decision, and that's what makes a leader. You got a map? No, I haven't, sir. There you are. One map, one compass, and that's about all the help you get. Thank you, sir. Another thing, listen to Sergeant Libby, my friend. He's a hell of a soldier. I will, sir. Lieutenant, good luck. Thank you. You're a damn Boy Scout, aren't you? What do you mean? Stealing 400 horses from the Army to save them. You're out of your mind. Well, I don't exactly consider it stealing. They were about to be destroyed. I wish you luck, Lieutenant. could have been more generous. Well, I gave him the best advice I could. You gave him a map and sent him on his way. Well, what would you want me to do, ride out and join him? I don't know. But you can't just leave him out there in the wind. I did everything that I could do. You're retired, not dead. I know what I can do. Sure, you're gonna write your article. You know what'll happen? There's not a publisher in the country that'll print it. General Douglas MacArthur will see to that. You know MacArthur. You go to him and tell him to stop this. Oh, come on now, please. Don't be ridiculous. You just go ahead. You write your article. 
Let me think about it. This is the right place, Jack. It's Broken Hill. Jack. Shame he gave up a damn good career. Hell, we threw away a damn good retirement, didn't we? Gee. Welcome back, sir. I seem to know this country pretty well. Uh, yeah, well, uh, my father and I used to hunt up here when I was a kid, but that's about it. From here north, it's, uh, it's nothing but guesswork, map work, and a whole lot of luck. North, sir? Well, we gotta keep moving, find a place to wait out the army. It's a bit like waiting out God, sir. Can't be done. North is either sparse and dry or wet and cold this time of year. North is as good a choice as any. Travel at night, sir. May I suggest, sir, that we travel by day as much as possible? Make better time. Good, then. We'll leave in two hours if you men are up to it. We're not that old, sir. We just look like it. Okay, you and Quinlan and Shattuck, tend to the horses and then get some rest. <laughs> what do you think Hardesty will do? I think if he finds us, he'll try to engage us, sir. I've never been in combat. You have. Perhaps you're better qualified. I beg your pardon, sir. This is your detail. I hope it doesn't come to combat, but if it does, there's nothing I can tell you that you won't learn in the first five seconds. Hardesty's traveling nearly 30 miles an hour. At that rate, they should engage them by nightfall. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, Flagstaff Station. Station Master. Where do you think they are now? Well, they're probably on the White Mountains somewhere. And the Army? They're probably running around the mountains looking for a paved road, no? Trying to catch 400 horses they know nothing about. How long since you were in Washington? Oh, Washington. Oh, I've been uh, eight, eight or nine years, you know. Uh, the last time I was there, I, I was with your mother. She loved army life. But she hated to travel. Mother did not love the army. She loved you. The same difference. Big difference. 
Let me ask you a question. Are we going to go on for the rest of our lives just button heads? Probably. You're just like your mother. No, I'm not. I'm like you. Hey. I'll tell MacArthur you sent him your love. How's that? Just the damn beginning. Pushing him too damn hard. Hopeless, goddammit. I'll let you know when it's hopeless, Mr. Shattuck. Until then, we're moving north hard and fast. Yeah. How many more died before that? I don't know. Some will. If you want to quit, why don't you quit right now? No, sir. Well done, sir. Sir. You'll proceed north across the river with the mounted troop. Yes, sir. And you'll remain here? No. We'll move to the northwest. We'll operate as a pincer, with the deserters between us. You will locate them, drive them to us, and we'll bring this matter to a close. Yes, sir. Major, offload the horses. Get these goddamn trucks turned around. Sergeant, sir. Break out! Take us just west of Rock Springs. Address the lieutenant, Sergeant Mulcahy. Sir. Dust, sir. That's a mounted patrol. They're at least 30 miles off. So much for grazing the green pastures. Let's get that herd moving, Sergeant. Moving where, sir? Up there, Mr. Quinlan. We go up there. It's our only choice.
heard him, boys. Let's go. The general sends his apologies, but his schedule is full right now. I can't be that busy. You tell him I'll be back, OK? I don't know. You tell him I will be back tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. I want a word with that man. It's a fascinating story. Why are you giving it to me? Because there isn't a paper in the country that's willing to be the first to criticize McCarthy. So if I publish photos and file a story in London... The press over here will have to pick it up. Indians. How many? A thousand or so. Damn it, I know it. Where? <laughs> Montana. What are you talking about, sir? The horses. I don't follow your thought there, Lieutenant. <sighs> the Sioux Reserve is right here just below the Canadian border. You know, there are about a thousand or so Indians on a lot of land. And uh, they all love horses. And well, it's good grazing country, too. Are you suggesting the cavalry give its horses to the Indians? <laughs> that is exactly what I'm suggesting, Sergeant. Well, don't that beat all. Army will just go in there and get them back. No, that's the beauty of it. By law, they have to be treated as a separate nation. No federal troops are allowed on the reservation. It's a fine plan, sir. Well, it's decided then. The Indians. The Indians riding cavalry mounts. My granddaddy never forgive me. But when you get to hell, don't tell him. Beg pardon, Colonel. But these are my men. You mind if I take a look? I could get my ass handed to me for this.
They're pushing us straight to Hardesty. Main unit will be ahead. Got us all sewn up. Nothing that's sewn that can't be unsewn. Well, I just don't see any way around on top. Go back to your cavalry tactics manual. Genghis Khan knew a trick or two. You know what that means? Yes, sir, I do. Tonight, lead with the geldings. They won't nicker. No mares, no warnings. Let's get back. What if they're ready and waiting? Yeah, what if they shoot? I mean, do we shoot back? They're not the enemy. Like hell, they're not. Didn't stop them at Anacostia. For them, we desert us. If they shooting at us, we shooting back. We are not shooting back. Look, all we have to do is break through and we're gone. It'll take them time to regroup and follow. We're in Montana now, we have a chance. Unload your weapon, James. behind us. Now they know where we are. I suggest deliberate and steady going. Take no chances and little forage, sir. All right, Top.
Christ almighty. We're gonna have to close that wound or it'll take infection. Top. Yes, god damn it, do it. The general will see you now. In two weeks. I'm getting calls, Owen. Calls from a newspaper in London. Today, I even got an inquiry from the Washington Chronicle. Rumors are rampant. The president is asking questions. I'm to meet with him next week. I hold you and your daughter responsible. Well, you always did blame somebody else when your plans failed. I have to battle Congress and Roosevelt on a daily basis to keep this army alive. I understand. No, you don't. Hitler is rebuilding the German army. Last month, he met with Mussolini in Venice. There's talk of a pact. Well, come on now, it's peace time. The Japanese are expanding into China. War is just around the corner, Owen. Modern war, and we're not ready. Damn it, Owen, I have nothing against the horses. But they've outlived their time. But they're soldiers to us. They go in battle with us. They get wounded. Time and time again, they save their lives. But they're not worth what it costs me to feed them. The Germans and the Japanese have tanks. Good tanks, fine tanks, in great numbers. We have 12. 12 tanks in the entire United States Army. I can't afford a cavalry we can't use. What about the men? They're good men, they're just trying to do their duty. Put yourself in their shoes. But then, who would be in mine? No, Owen. These soldiers of yours, these renegades, will be caught. They'll face a general court-martial, they'll be convicted, and they will be punished appropriately. The horses will be destroyed, as I have ordered. Look, this is a time of a great depression. The people need heroes. No. Well, God help you when the public finds out about your actions. They'll devour you. Even if they could, they wouldn't. I am General Douglas MacArthur. The country needs me, and they know it. You're dismissed. General. I'm not in the army anymore.
Lieutenant! Lieutenant! These six are finished. Ahab's feeder split clean through, top. They're finished. They'll slow us down. We can't compromise the herd. Form them into a parade, and uh, do it quick before the 12th is on us. Top, do not look to Top for confirmation. I gave a direct order. Oh, she's dead. They had to come to this, didn't it? At least we're not herding them into pits and slaughtering them. We've got them, Sergeant. Let's go! Move out.
by the northeast of here. My opinion is we're attempting to cross into the Sioux Reserve. Very well. We'll move to flank them. Sir. Move out smartly, Corporal. Good move, Buxton. Oh, good move. Montana. I'll cable London. Okay, scout the left and southern flanks.
There's nothing more that can be done for him now. It was following an order. My order. You gave a soldier an order. He obeyed. There's always a price. We gotta keep moving, sir. We got the twelfth on our ass, and we're flanked over there. You think we can get past them to the reserve? No, sir. Well, then it's Canada. Canada? We'll have to make a run for it, and just pray there's no one at the border. Mount up. What about Mulcahy? You want to give him a funeral, Shattuck? Start digging. Ready when you are, sir. Organize a detail. Prepare Mr. Mulcahy's body for transportation. What are you doing, Sergeant? We have to keep after those men. Take charge of it for proper burial. Sergeant, this man was a renegade and a thief. There's been no court, no review. This man was a soldier. We'll treat him with dignity, Captain. You'll face charges for this. Sir, if you wish to pursue and single-handedly capture them, I'm sure the War Department will commend you. But not one of my men moves till this soldier is taken care of. There's no sign of him. How do you figure that? Okay. Took care of their horses better than anyone. They're paying their respects and giving us time. You used a dead man, Jack. Goddamn right I did. And I'd do it again. It'll be hard to see coming to intercept us. All right. This is us. This is Milk River at the Canadian border. And this is Hardesty. And the main body of the 23rd. Probably cut us off at about here. I'm too goddamn old for this, Jack. Quit. The whole goddamn regiment's chasing us, Jack. I don't even know what we're doing anymore. You're free to back out, James. You too, Sean. With your permission, sir. <sighs> we traveled nearly 2,000 miles together. If you men want to stop now, you go right ahead. You got no blame for me. Christ on a crutch. Hell, boys, I, I never been a quitter. And neither a Shattuck. Are you? No, I'll stick. Goddamn son of a bitch. Come on. Well, then, let's go to Canada. Come.
To the right is Milk River and the Canadian border. That's the main encampment over there. Two miles, I'd say. They're in a good position. They'll move fast when they spot us. I suggest we move slow so we don't raise dust. We'll rest the remounts for the final dash. We might just make it. Yes, sir. We might. Good afternoon. This area is restricted. Uh, we're the press, Corporal. No civilians allowed. This is Miss Jessica Stewart. And I'm Evan Buckley, a photographer with the London Tribune. Please step out of the car, Miss Stewart. I'm going to escort Miss Stewart to Colonel Hardesty. We'll have to detain you here, sir. Am I under arrest, Colonel? You're way off limits here, Miss Stewart. You will be detained until this exercise is over. As for the deserters, in order to shoot to kill if necessary. That's official, from MacArthur himself. Not many men get that order. I have the privilege of attacking my own men, again. Twice in one career. You could choose to ignore it. I won't. I've been taught to obey and follow orders. No, I will not do otherwise, Miss Stewart. Being army yourself, you should understand. Chief of Staff is building a new modern army out of the ruins of the old. This is insanity. Certainly. What would you have me do? Give them a chance. File a protest with MacArthur. I already have. Then file another. I've sent a wire. Wait for an answer. I have my answer, Miss Stewart. If you think I won't report this, then think again. When you fire on those men, I will witness it and I will not be silent. Corporal. Sir. Keep Miss Stewart company. Contact headquarters. Advise them we have the renegades in sight and under the gun. Mounties. I think they're there to stop us. Oh, Sean. They're waiting with cookies and milk. A damned white flag. Maybe they're surrendering. Gunned, Lieutenant. Looks like you've lost a good number of horses. We can still save what's left. You'd risk your life, your men's lives, on a whim. They're on the table. Christ, Jack. 
We got four 75 millimeter howitzers on your flank. Orders I shoot to kill. Give it up, man. Stand a court. At least there's some honor in that. We're not surrendering the horses. You do whatever you have to do. He's young and he's headstrong. You and the others are just plain fools, Sergeant Libby. In your eyes, I suppose so. spread out for a dash. It's gonna have to be a dash. Spread out ain't so bad, is it, Mr. Quinlan? Not a bit. Looks like I lead. With your permission, sir. I take the point, Sergeant. <laughs> Right flank, Mr. Shattuck. And we can take it from here, sir. Meaning what? Uh, Shattuck and Quinlan and me were kind of like a buffalo. We've had our day. Hell, we're lucky we lived this long. But it doesn't have to end for you here. You can turn back now. Stand the court. Hell, even blame it on us. I'd be honored to take the blame for any crime you committed. Are you suggesting I relinquish command of this detail, Sergeant? No, sir. Good then. Carry on.
you, Sergeant. Sergeant. Fired high and wide. Yeah, it would appear so. Forrest never was much of an artilleryman. <laughs> like hell. Under arrest, Sergeant. Have you broken a law in Canada? Well, we came over the river uninvited. That you did. But I consider it a minor infraction. What are your plans for the horses, Lieutenant? Well, only to keep them alive. Now, what about you, lads? Looking to make yourselves useful? Well, it'd be nice to have a new bunch of fellas to tell my lies to. Somebody else likes horses. <laughs> well, we made it, sir. Two thousand miles. Got a long story about a quick decision. And I spent enough time in the army. Think about the Yukon. See what that looks like. Alaska? Good God. 
Well, we've been heading north for so long, it's kind of hard to change direction. <laughs> and you? You told me once that you hated what this country was becoming. Well, I do too. And, uh, I want to help change it. I'm going to go back and stand the court. I hope you kick their ass, Lieutenant. I do too, Top. Take care, Jack. You too, sir.